Welcome to the news agenda for July 19th, 2021. It's National Stick Out Your Tongue Day. Do it. Do it. Good. Good. No thanks, I use toilet paper. Ah, uh, you better f like and subscribe for that level of burn. So are you ready for the news? <laughs> no? So what? Let's do it anyway. Anyway, let's start in the Caribbean, where, or Caribbean if you're fancy, where Cuba has weathered protests recently. Some of these are the biggest in decades and appear to have been inspired, at least in part, by the coronavirus pandemic. Apparently, communist leadership did not want to share the virus equally. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. That was bad. But from the reports, it seems that the pandemic was devastating to the tourism industry in Cuba, which has knock-on effects across the entire island, including food, medicine, and parts for 1954 Hudson Hornets. It's not all material goods. Electricity is not reliable on the island nation, which made the summer temperatures even more unbearable. But in light of the protests, the Cuban government has opened up to some of the materials that tourists can bring, such as food, medicine, and bottles containing more than three ounces of liquid. That rebel, that rebel commie island. The protests are not being handled kindly either, with police breaking up the demonstrations as if they were American cops breaking up a Black Lives Matter vigil. In a recent speech, President Miguel Diaz-Canel encouraged his supporters to take on protesters physically and that revolutionaries need to be on the streets. It's even more impressive when you realize it's the president that's calling for revolution. And yes, I do know about permanent revolution. President Donald Trump, on the other hand, responded to the Cuban president by saying, I thought of that first. Conservative think tank the Partridge Foundation issued a statement that called for more wars within the Western Hemisphere because it would be easier than the ones on the literal opposite side of the world. In Haiti too, you know, for old time's sake. Speaking of coups in this hemisphere, remember the attempted one back in January? Where there are a whole bunch of books coming out about the last days of the Trump presidency. So many that scientists call it a metric fuckton of books, which is 2.2 imperial fucktons. In these books are several scary incidents, all of which, all of which probably should have been published previously. One of them is the details that the whole January 6th kerfuffle was an honest-to-God attempting coup, which Joint Chiefs of Staff head Mark Milley said would not ever finish happening. Of course, Donald Trump denied it ominously. He said he is not into coups, and if he was, he wouldn't do one with Miley anyway. That's not all the information we got. It was revealed in one of these books that Donald Trump was actually sequestered in a bunker for one of the many protests last year, probably the one just before Lafayette Square. When that information was leaked, he tried to write it off as a tour to the public, but it wasn't, and he was scared. He was also very pissed, like a hotel bed in Moscow, allegedly. I'm not really saying that there's anything wrong with what happens or does not happen in a hotel bed, but leaving the mess for the maid is certainly a dick move. The president said that the leaker of that particular detail was committing treason and should be executed, which would still be better than continuing to work for Donald Trump. You would figure that after all these stories, Trump would be done, but his supporters are rabid. This is most visible lately in his influence over who is in the House Commission to look into the January 6th attacks. He met with House Minority Leader and man who's trying to remember where he's left his integrity, Kevin McCarthy, this past week. Joke's on Representative McCarthy. He never had any. Anyway, in broken record news, CPAC happened last weekend, and without Borat to offer levity to the affair, the rest of the Conservative Political Action Conference dutifully filled to in to become clowns. One person who failed the clown, though, was Donald Trump Jr., who bombed so hard that comedians around the world felt it. Texas has always led the charge. Well, till about like a couple months ago, and then Austin sort of took over. Like, I don't know, guys. Like, Texas was leading the charge. You're still top 25. But we got to work on that stuff, because those people have lost their minds. Right? Like, seriously, that looked painful.
by voting on a voting rights bill, or a reg voting restriction bill for that matter. Which is exactly what queer people have been doing for decades in Texas, and then people of color before them. If they could. It's Texas, after all. It's pretty big and hard to get out of. The departure of the House members was designed to prevent a quorum, and Republicans say that's just as well because quorum sounds like queer and they don't want anything to do with that. Unfortunately, though, some legislators do know how to do things in Texas, and so they have threatened Democrats with arrest if they return to Texas. But, you know, finally, a reason for the legislatures who left on principle to not go back to Texas besides protecting voting rights. Speaking of legislation, the European Union announced on Wednesday a bevy of climate change legislation with hopes of making its members carbon neutral by 2050. Some of the legislation includes money for research to install nipples on almonds to make non-dairy milk more sustainable. Also, they're looking at how they can change national borders from a black to a more reflective color to reduce the heat absorbed by the borders. It also probably includes death. I mean, uh, probably. I didn't read it. Also in death news, over 100 people have died in Germany and Central Europe due to floods that have been blamed on climate change. Sure, this is why the EU wants to fix climate change. It's finally affecting them. Thank God we don't have to do that here. It's not like we've had a heat wave in the Pacific Northwest or anything, and the California is facing another year of drought, and uh, anything like that. But climate change, you know, is it really up to humans? I mean, of course it is, which means that the things we can't control tend to make things even much worse, such as the moon. The moon is entering a wobbly phase that is anticipated to wreak havoc on tides all around the world. Scientists have started to offer suggestions on counteracting the bubbly wobbly wobble, which includes teaching white people how to dance. Very dangerous. Speaking of white people ruining things, a city in Minnesota has asked residents to stop letting loose unwanted pet goldfish into waterways. Some goldfish became the size of footballs and were discovered in le local lakes. Some suggested that sharks be let loose to hunt down the little boogers. Others have suggested that a more creative way is about the way to go, calling goldfish quote-unquote Lake Superior Bass and selling them to fancy restaurants or something. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro spent 10 days with hiccups and intestinal blockage, which means that he was full of shit and he had hiccups. Some say that these are related to a stabbing the president suffered in 2018 on the campaign trail, but others say that the attack was merely trying to give the president another way to expel his feces. Now it's time for a short movie review of Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. It was exactly as you thought it was, just more so. That's the news at Jen at the news at movies. And finally, in vaguely local news, the comedy club Comedy on State in Madison, Wisconsin, got a little heat for booking comedian and masturbator Louis C.K. I do not perform in Madison frequently, so my experience with that club are purely as a customer and not as a comic, and I don't really know if I'm going to go through with uh, going up to there for mics. So part of me wants to go to the open mic the week he's in town and do my MC, uh, Louis C.K. jokes. Because I think that's funny. I'd like to think I wouldn't take an opening spot from him, but I don't know if I wouldn't. These are the kind of questions comedians have to weigh. Well, the point is moot anyway. It's so obscenely unlikely that it's not really worth thinking about or, you know, anything. But the thing is, the thing is, he sold out five shows at the club. Five shows. Quickly. Which I guess tells you more about Madison, Wisconsin than it does about Louis C.K. There are consequences for actions, perhaps, like C.K.'s, but those who claim cancel culture can't see the ticket sales. Or maybe they do, knowing that sometimes people want to do things they're not supposed to do. I don't know. I don't have answers. Just that if you think Madison is some beacon of progressivism, then why did he sell out the room for five fucking shows? Anyway, that's the news at Jen for July 19th, 2021. Please visit the Patreon and remember to like and subscribe. And if you're in Aurora on July 20th, I'd love to see you at the Comedy Shrine. I'm doing the 8 for 8 show, so 8 bucks pays for 8 comedians. You can't beat that for a dollar, but there's eight of them. <laughs> anyway, 
So thank you to my patrons. Thank you to anyone who's liked and subscribed. Thank you so much. And please remember, I love you.